Sam Sulik. Should you be copying him? Should you be listening to him? In today's video, I'm going to analyze his training and break down the positives and negatives and why you should consider putting some of his training approach into your own training program. Let's break down the training habits of the prominent fitness figure, Sam Sulik. I've been watching and following Sam since he had around 50,000 subscribers and have been pretty blown away by his training and what seems to be a very non-science based approach. But after analyzing it, is it really a bad way to train? Does he deserve all this stick that he gets on the internet? Maybe not. Some of his methods are absolutely golden, while copying other parts of his methods might be holding you back. So before we get into what's working very well for Sam, clearly I want to get into what not to do. The first thing everybody talks about with Sam is his crazy technique. Some would call it bad technique. And watching him, you tend to get the idea that he doesn't really care. He doesn't really focus on technique too much as long as he's moving maximum amount of weight. If you've been following my channel or my Instagram for a little while, you'll know that I am a big believer in great technique comes first. But I also realised that you shouldn't obsess about it so much that it actually holds you back from utilising any form of progressive overload. At the end of the day, progressive overload is king if you're wanting to build muscle. However, lifting with less than ideal technique can limit any potential muscle gain. So my advice is to focus on both. Lift hard with great technique or maybe don't progress the lift that week because we could argue that if your form is worse with a heavier weight then it isn't actually a personal best. Try to standardise your form across all reps, all sets, and that will lead to much better muscular growth. Now, Sammy's definitely an outlier when it comes to technique. I mean, he's clearly a genetic freak, and of course, there's the use of PEDs that we cannot deny. So he's probably gonna respond to his training no matter what he does. But looking at his training intensity, that is what you should be aspiring to, because lifting that hard will definitely lead to better gains. And stopping just because a set gets tough, or stopping a few reps shy of failure because the science says so, is likely to lead to a very underdeveloped physique and it's something I see all too often as a coach. So my advice here is take Sam's intensity and add a sprinkle of great technique and you'll be perfectly good to go. When it comes to Sam's training plan it's technically unknown as he doesn't post the exacts in written format anywhere or what he's sticking to exactly but looking through enough videos over the last year or so we can definitely see that he trains with a high frequency and if you haven't watched one of my most recent videos where I talk about the bro split versus high frequency training I'd recommend you do to see the science behind why it's a better approach for gaining muscle mass. So Sam seems to train each muscle group once per day, which is very much like a bro split, but because he doesn't take many rest days that it seems, unless he absolutely needs one, that means he's training every muscle group once every four to five days. And much of the science at the moment shows that this is actually a very optimal way to train. Arguably, it would be better if he trained every muscle group around every 72 hours of rest and then reduced his training volume per session. But hey, it works for him, doesn't it? But for other regular folks, this is why I recommend an upper lower rest, upper lower rest training split. It's high frequency, which maximizes muscle protein synthesis, which allows you to train with higher volume throughout the week, but with a higher intensity because it's actually less fatiguing per muscle per session. So you can go hard for five sets in one workout rather than fatiguing over the course of, let's say, 10 sets. So if you want to follow Sam's approach with training, I definitely recommend you give it a try, but maybe consider reducing the overall training volume and slightly up in the training frequency and this will lead to much more intense sessions and improved recovery. What is excellent about Sam's training is that when watching his training videos he doesn't seem to do too many reps or too many sets when he warms up. He does what we call feeder sets and quickly builds up to his heavier work. For example on his incline press he might do a plate aside for 10, two plates aside for five, three plates aside for one or two and then he'll be into his heavy main working set. If you've never tried this warm up approach before you might be thinking it's too little and it could lead to injury but from first hand experience of doing this over the last several years I can guarantee that it works I also do this for the majority of my clients too and they seem to give me good feedback when I very first built up to a 440 pound bench press I only did five warm-up sets and around about 20 reps total before I hit the main lift and this is because you need to prime the body you don't burn it out before you get to the real juicy part of the session the body warms up way faster than you think. What's really positive about Sam's training when it comes to bodybuilding or muscular growth or hypertrophy, whatever you want to call it, is the fact that he trains generally in the 8 to 12 rep scheme, even pushing as high as 20 reps on some working sets. As we know, this is an excellent approach for building muscle. So because of this and these higher rep schemes, even though he is training to failure very often, likely on around 
90% of his working sets. He isn't training so heavy that he's completely burning out his nervous system. And have you ever done a one rep max deadlift and just wanted to take a nap later on? I guarantee you have. And training in a higher rep scheme compared to these lower one to five rep schemes is so much easier to recover from. And because of this, he's actually training lighter than he possibly can. If he was to train into one to five rep scheme, he'd be lifting some seriously, seriously heavy weights. Now, I know he's lifting very heavy weights as it is, but because he's in this eight to 20 rep range, for him, it's not as heavy as it possibly could be. So if your goal is to build muscle, copying the SANS approach of the eight to 20 rep scheme and train to failure on the majority of your working sets is a very ideal way to do this. Now, there is plenty of research out there showing that you do not need to train to muscular failure in order to build muscle, and we cannot deny this research. However, have you ever stopped one to two reps short of failure during a set and felt very good about it? I'd say no. This is where Sam's enjoyment factor is really something to look up to. He's willing to go as hard as possible and be proud that he's got everything out of himself. Again, from experience, train to failure for the majority of your working sets is a way more enjoyable process when it comes to your training. And for me and the majority of my clients, it's definitely yielded way better muscular growth. So if you're currently not trained to failure, maybe give it a go for the next month or two. It's not going to kill you off, but what it will do is give you vital information on whether it works for you or not. With any of your training, whether it's Sam or whether it's a pro bodybuilder or whether it's an amateur, you should always take things with the approach that I'll give it a try and see if it works for me. Try not to demonize people's training because if it works for them, it works for them. So the question is, should you copy Sam? Well, no, not exactly. But can you take away a lot of good from his training and his videos? Absolutely, yes. Rather than looking for negatives with people, I've always been a fan of trying to take away the positives that I can. So, okay, I don't want to emulate Sam's technique, but I do want to emulate his intensity because that's way more fun and training to failure has always led to better results for me. Is training each muscle group once per day optimal and training with a once per week frequency? No, but for Sam, because he doesn't take rest days, he seems to train with a higher frequency of each muscle group twice per week. But again, for you, I would say to optimize this, if you're looking to copy it in some format, is change your training to an upper lower rest, upper lower rest split, or you could do upper lower rest push pull legs. And this still allows you to train each muscle group twice per week, optimize muscle protein synthesis, and therefore yield better muscular gains. Overall, I love Sam and what he's done for the industry. He's building a new generation of lifters that are willing to train hard in the gym and who aren't trying to get bogged down with the science and getting people back to enjoying lifting weights just to enjoy to lift weights. It's really important that people figure out what works for them. Don't just follow science. Don't just follow people on the internet. Do what works for you. So copy him, don't copy him. The decision is absolutely up to you. And if you need help with your own training and nutrition and you want to build a more muscular physique, I currently have 50% off my one-to-one -one coaching package. So if you're looking to get some results or you're struggling to get results as it is on your own, fill out the questionnaire below. So guys, thanks for watching the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel. The channel is growing so well right now. It'd be nice to continue to see that happen and maybe consider leaving a like on the video as well. I'll see you in the next one.